video unlike any other I've made before. So who knows if you'll get anything out of this. But my intention is that you will. Uh, usually I think things through. I create some sort of subject matter that's philosophical and metaphysical in order to help sort out my own my own thoughts and hopefully help others doing the same thing. But this time around, I haven't made a video in a while. This time around, I just realized all around my house, I have scraps of paper with thoughts written on them. Mostly thoughts that I've heard other speakers make um, or things I've read in books and thought were important, so I wrote them down. And there, there's just a few scraps of paper lying around my house and it's time that I uh, do something with them. So these thoughts are from different times throughout the last maybe year, year and a half, and they're probably not related to each other at all. But I'm going to share them with you, and uh, hopefully somebody gets something out of this that's uh, positive and uplifting. So here we go. Thoughts, philosophical thoughts. I'll try to give credit where, where it's due when I know who, who it is or where I got it from. First one from Walter Russell. Uh, I actually got this from uh, Matt Presty, but Matt Presty was quoting Walter Russell. Quote, He who builds gods in his own image builds idols for his worshiping. He whose idol is fear and wrath cannot know the God of love. Until you know love, you are what your idol is, a miserable sinner to whom mercy must be shown by your idol who you yourself are. And you will be punished for your imagined self-made sins by you yourself. For the idol you worship will show you no mercy until you are freed from him by knowing love. Walter Russell. Next one. Looks like Rene Guinon or uh, the light course from Rudolf Steiner possibly is the source for this one. Hard to tell on these scraps of paper. Let's see here. Self-confidence of the warrior is not the self-confidence of the average man. The average man seeks certainty in the eyes of the onlooker and calls that self-confidence. The warrior seeks impeccability in his own eyes and calls that humility. The average man is hooked to his fellow men while the warrior is hooked only to infinity. That was actually Carlos Castaneda, that quote. I remember now. Let's see here. This one's about self-esteem and psychoepistemology, probably from Ayn Rand or from Nathaniel Brandon. The cause of authentic self-esteem is psychoepistemological. The rationally directed character of a person's thinking precedes the causal sequence as it follows. The rational psychoepistemology leads to self-esteem. These two lead to achievements, and achievements lead to pride. Low self-esteem affects cognition. It actually, hinder, it actually hinders one's thinking process. Oh, that one's good. Low self-esteem affects cognition. It affects the way that you cognize, it affects the way you think. Low self-esteem actually hinders one's thinking process. That makes sense. The authentic man is the moral agent, one who thinks for himself individually. Man is a rational being. Reason is his primary tool for survival. Man is the only creature on earth who is conceptual. This is cognition. Whether he realizes it or not, he is a self-programmer. This is volition, vocation, will, and intent. The method by which he programs himself is called psychoepistemology. 
The relationship between the reality of the world and how well his mind integrates that world, that reality, that is psychoepistemology. It's the integrativeness of subconscious mind. Mental health is directly related to psychoepistemological integration of reality. It is also the foundation of self-esteem. Let me read that one again. Mental health is directly related to the psychoepistemological integration of reality. It is also the foundation of self-esteem. So, that would mean that your psychoepistemology is a reflection of how well you're integrating with reality. And how well you're integrating with reality is a direct reflection of your level of self-esteem. The most important contributor to mental health is one's self-assessment of themselves. Do you like? Do you care? Do you love yourself? Do you value yourself? This is self-esteem. Emotional intelligence is not a part of cognition. It is not rational, nor does it use thought. It is a feeling that accompanies thought. One's psychoepistemology may or may not be suitable to program or to apprehend reality. It is a barometer for one's awareness and success of reasoning faculty. Mental illness is fundamentally a psychoepistemological disorder, a thinking disorder, root problems in the mind, an alienation from reality itself. Mental health is unobstructed cognitive efficacy. One's self-assessment is the number one factor in one's value and behavior. That one's worth reading again. One's self-assessment is the number one factor in one's value and behavior. So that would mean the way you behave is a direct reflection of how you assess yourself, how you care for yourself, how you talk to yourself, what you think of yourself. Okay, that's all, that's all uh, Nathaniel Brandon. I think it's from The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. A really, really powerful book. Moving on, more notes. More notes lying around the house. Seeing is like a seed. It's accomplished by awareness beyond the formal traditions. There are two types of path, the formal and the energetic. The formal, which is social, religious, and allegorical. It's designed for shepherds and flocks. Groupthink, consensus trance. The energetic path is about achievements. It's an awareness of life energy. It's where seeing and moving one's assemblage point occurs, creating one's self-renewal. It produces impeccable warriors. Impeccability is about energy, harvesting energy, saving it, and directing it. Most formal paths make fools of people, stifles people's authenticity. Awareness of death snaps us out of this. Enough harvesting of energy allows warriors to discover their totality, the totality of oneself, which is freedom. Seeing is knowledge-based. Ignorance holds us back. There is nothing in the bank of knowledge that can put man's authentic interests at risk. Well, I'll read that one again. That's, that's Carlos Castaneda or Armando Torres. Definitely Toltec teachings here. Seeing is knowledge-based. Ignorance holds us back. There is nothing in the bank of knowledge that can put man's authentic interests at risk. 
That one's good. Self-importance is ignorance. It stops us from seeing. It diverts us off the energetic path. Energetic warriors are always a step away from freedom because their path is merit-based. All their energy that they have has been earned, achieved. By listening to silence, which is listening to commands of the spirit, there are no shortcuts in a merit-based path. The formal path and its symbols are keys without a door. Hmm. <laughs> That's, that's a good one. I'll repeat that. The formal path, the one for shepherds and flocks, it has symbols which are keys without a door. Energy is impulse to action. Seeing to dreaming to pure perception to more energy, attention, and then seeing again. Uh, Nagual, Nagualism from 2019, sometime this year. We are taught from birth as if we are a flock. So teach people to be the individual they are instead. I can't guide others. If I have enough power, I can put you in front of the abyss, but I can't guide you. Our self-importance clouds us from seeing the things as they remove self-importance. Our self-importance clouds us from seeing things as they are. It removes, it removes us from reality. Self exists not for its own sake, but to feed the eagle and the eagle's emanations. What limits human perception is timidity we build our own psychological jail. Feeding importance makes us do absurd things, mostly for attention. Self-importance feeds on the same type of energy that lets us dream. Therefore, to lose it liberates an energy surplus for our use. Precaution is required to manage this surplus. A sorcerer who considers himself important is the saddest thing there is. <laughs> I'll repeat that one again. A sorcerer who considers himself self-important is the saddest thing there is. Removing self-importance gives us the energy to move our perception to the place of no pity and having removing self-importance gives us the energy to move our perception to the place of no pity and moving from that part of the world there. It is as valid as coming from a place of reason. There are three types of language that humans can speak. The first one all humans speak naturally due to our socialization. It's the language of gossip. No matter what language you speak and no matter where you go, all people know how to speak this. It is also the language of the victim. Victims always speak in terms of gossip. They give away their power each time they do so. The second type of language is the, is the language of the warrior. The language of the warrior is one who has woken up from the victim and understands that he has the power to dream and that this reality is dreamlike and he has influence in it and so he changes his speech. However, he oscillates back and forth from the language of the victim, which he was taught by his social conditioning, and the language of the warrior, the one who affirms his own life 
and is responsible for it. The third type of language is the language of truth. It's heroic. It's also known as the language of the master. The master only speaks truth. If he or she cannot speak truth, they are silent. Autophobia is a foundation of tyranny, afraid to be alone. It is the crowd groupthink that is tyrannical. Autophobia is one afraid to be one's true authentic self. Well, there you go. That's a few scraps lying around that uh, I now have recorded and can probably throw away because they're now in the digital ether. If anybody liked this, please comment. Please share it if there's any value there for others. Please share it with them. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>